What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes, with Frankie Two Top. <laughs> hope you're having a blessed day, regardless of what time of day or night you're watching this. I hope um, you're all good, you and your family. Uh, we're heading to a service call uh, in this video uh, in Valley Stream, not too far from our shop, which is based, also based in Valley Stream. Um, customer has a heating system and it's not working like it should. All right. So um, let's go see what's going on. Let's go and give them once over and let's give them heat. You ready to do this? Yeah. Let's fix this. All right, here we have it, Burnham. Independence, I'm gonna guess it's an IN5 when I've been looking at it, which is 140,000 BTUs, gross input. We have a copper steam header piping. Not recommended because the constant expansion and contraction will cause these solder joints to fail, but it's fine. I notice we have some rust and some corrosion on the lower valve of the side glass. Frankie, real quick, what is that called? Pressure drill. Uh, pressure gauge. Low water cutoff. Sight glass. Water feed. Automatic vent damper. That's right. Excellent. What is this piping arrangement called right here? Hoffman Lewis. Very good, Frankie. This was invented by... Insurance company in 1919 because of loss, damages, and even explosions. Loss of life, correct. Back in the early 1900s, the Hartford Steam Boiler Insurance Company uh, underwrote boilers, right? Hence the Steam Boiler Insurance Company name, right? And back in the days, you know, boilers did not have this piping arrangement here uh, called the Hartford Loop. And if a leak developed in the wet return or the condensate pipe that brings the steam condensate back to the boiler, the boiler would, uh, if a hole developed in that, the boiler would uh, lose all its water. And back in the days, you had attendants, boiler attendants, usually the wife of the house, <laughs> but in some larger buildings, you know, that you actually had a steam boiler tent, which actually fed it coal, mm. right, and maintained the water level. Well, if you didn't have water in the boiler and it ran, and then someone added water to it, not really knowing, it blows up. Mm. And you could have loss of, you know, you know life. Um, so as I was predicted, this is an SIN5, it's 140,000 BTUs from the manufacture date of November of 2002. Also inside here, this is called the, I don't expect you to know that one. Most people um, don't. Uh, thermostat relay. Thermostat relay. Yep. Thermostat relay. Gas valve. Is it a standing pilot or electronic ignition? And you can tell that by you have a copperous looking capillary tube or tube that is for the thermal couple and this is for the gas, which is the silver in color. There's also a little switch right here, right down there. And that is called a... Spill switch. Nope. A flame rollout. Rollout switch. Yeah, spill, spill switch is in the back of the boiler by the draft diverter. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, turn up the heat and uh, see how this thing runs. Also, we're going to look inside, we're going to grab the tool bag, we're going to look inside the combustion chamber, look, see if we have any, any rust or any water evidence of a leak, you know, maybe a defective heat exchanger. Uh, we do have some other leaks, you know, we that's a, that on the side glass, but, what's that? We have a, light, a pilot? Is we have a pilot. We have a, I hear it, we have a pilot. Okay. There's the pilot. Perfect. One of the things I like to do, when, especially when I'm diagnosing a steam boiler, is... Give the pressure troll a tap. Now, if you go back later, um, earlier in the video, you're gonna see that the, um, the mercury vial inside the pressure troll was kind of level or leaning back the other way. I gave it a tap just to clear any debris that may be clogged up in the, in the uh, pigtail. And sure enough, the thing kicked right on. As you can see, now we're leaning that way when it was that way and not activating and not closing the circuit. Um, 
off camera, I filled up the boiler by opening up the manual feed and I filled it up to about here. You know, I waited, I watched the water level slowly rise to the top of the side glass, and then I waited about another 15, 20 seconds, just estimating that it's right up to about here, which is not there because the boiler stops right there. So it will probably have water up to here. But I want to confirm the integrity of the heat exchanger or the boiler itself. And if there was any water leaking inside, like down there, we would see it, and then we know we have a defective heat exchanger or cast iron block. But this, in this instance, it appears to be fine. All right, so now we're gonna drain some water out of the boiler and we're gonna fill that halfway again. Uh, we may actually go all the way down. Oh, I wanna test the low water cutoff, and it looks like I'm gonna have to change the sight glass valve, because that's uh, pretty bad. We know the boiler is good. There's no, fra there's no fr uh, fractures in the cast iron. The only issue that we saw, tapping on this activated the boiler. So we're gonna take out the pressure troll. We're gonna check the pigtail, make sure that's clean. If that is clean, we have a defective pressure troll. And that was probably preventing consistent boiler operation. Okay, there's our low water cutoff. The water level is below the probe. So now we're good. So we'll dump this and we'll continue draining. I just wanna get all the sludge out of the bottom of the boiler out. But at least now we know the low water cutoff works. Okay, so we got the front clear cover removed off the pressure troll. We're gonna remove the two low voltage control lines. Power switch is off. Let's take this out and uh, check the pigtail. So now it looks pretty clean. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put a rag over the low water cutoff. I don't wanna get any water in there when I turn. The pigtail. And there's the pigtail. Okay. I got a little crazy with the uh, Teflon tape, but can we blow through this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is it clean? It seems like it's a little meat down in there. Let's see. I'm blowing that thing. No? No bueno? No bueno. Okay. Let's, uh, we could try. Let's go try that. Try to clean. Why is this reversed like that? We're going to try to clean this, uh, pigtail. You see, nothing's coming out of here. That's hot. Is that cold? Yeah, okay. I like cold water. Not like ice cold aquaponic, by the way. Okay, so we're going to try to blow on this. Now I'm good at having black things in my mouth, but it's just the flashlight, but with the... Okay, see, in case you're new to the channel, the flashlight, you know, because I don't believe in wearing the head headlamp. So we do have a clogged pigtail. Now, this is, has a long shank here, or a long shaft. So it'd be best if we could reuse this, right? Actually, it's best if we put a brass one in, because that's not going to clog up like this one did, but I'm going to show you how, how to clean this. We're going to get a wire hanger from the homeowner. With a pressure troll, if you ever see a pressure troll installed like this, no bueno. No bueno. It should be looking like this with the box facing you. Correct. Absolutely. And holla here. Exactly. So, I got a wire hanger. Okay? And we're going to try to clean this out. Now, we know that this is the side that went into the boiler, the long shaft. So, I'm going to focus on that side first. And we're just going to run that through there. All right? And keep in mind, we're going to get some mess here. So, if you're in like in a porcelain sink, uh, good luck to you. <laughs> Because you're going to have a lot of cleanup. It's <laughs> that white porcelain, you know, all that years of rust. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it takes you a long time to do it, but at the end of the day, we need to get this clean. Now, look at that. Making progress. Put a little bend on that because sometimes a little curve is good for the good for the job. Mm -hmm. Get that in there like that. And 
Now look a little deeper. Try the other side now. Not yet. Keep working on it. This could take some time, but we keep trying to get this wire hanger in there. Maybe even a, uh, a, a piece of wire, a little more flexibility on it to, to get around that bend. But that's what we want to do here. We want to save this pigtail. All right, good. Okay, it's been a while. We got water flowing through it. Should be good. See that? She's clean. Just save the pigtail. I would like to change your pressure gauge and your side glass set. Side glass set because that, listen, it's a lot of corrosion on there. Now, why should we change? What's the purpose of the pressure gauge? Right now, we very verified that the pigtail was clogged and that was preventing boiler operation. So let's say hypothetically a month from now goes by, uh, the thermostat is set for 75, it's reading less. Let's say it's reading 68 or 72, it doesn't really matter, right? But the thermostat is telling the boiler to turn on, or should be telling the boiler to turn on. And you come down here, and you look at the pressure gauge and realize, oh, listen, it's 12 PSI, right? Yet your pressure troll, this nice, beautiful, mercury-based pressure troll, is set for under 2, with a differential of 2. Right? It's subtractive. So it's close to 0 0.5 as possible of pressure. That's what these things should be running at, right? So, but you have 12 PSI of pressure in there. It's like, oh, well, that's the reason why the boy is not running, because the pressure troll is preventing the boy from coming on, which is exactly mm -hmm. what it was doing this, in this case, because your pigtail was clogged and there was pressure stuck between the pigtail here, between here and there. It thought that there was too much pressure in the boy that, that was preventing the boy from running. So let's say a month from now, you come down here and the pressure, pressure gauge is reading five. The house should be warm at that point because you have five PSI of pressure, that's a lot of pressure. Or anything over, you know, this is not a high pressure system. This is a low pressure boy. You need 0.5 PSI. If anyone tells you you need more, you're shaking your head yes because you know you've heard this before. If anyone tells you you need more pressure, right? You're making the system work harder, right? to produce more pressure inside the system which increases wear and tear and also increases the amount of money that you're gonna pay the gas man, National Grid, to heat your home. Think about it. Speaking of money, right? You're, how often do you drain the boiler? I should do it once a month. Okay, let me tell you something. You seem, you said you're an Army veteran and we thank you for your service, right? You may have, and this is, not, this is not a pop quiz, but it is kind of a pop quiz. What is the boiling temperature of water? <laughs> Take a that's wild that's guess. Um, Boiling temperature of water. 130? 130, okay. Wrong, but what is the freezing point of water? It's 32. See, okay, everyone knows that because it's winter at that, that side right now, right? <laughs> the boiling temperature of water is 212 degrees. That's clean water at sea level. We're basically at sea level. Technically, the elevation is like 22 feet above sea level, but we're basically at sea level. But the boiling temperature of clean water is 212 degrees, right? That is not the boiling temperature of dirty water that's filled with iron from your 100-year-old house with the 100-year-old pipes that are inside here, right? And by the way, I'm sure that's wrapped with asbestos, right, up there, right? But that's not the temperature of, of boiling water, which means you may be spending a hell of a lot more water, uh, gas to burn, to, to burn that's gonna heat water to create steam. Think about it that way. So next time you drain this boiler, think about how much possible money you're saving. We're not talking about a couple of dollars. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of dollars, realistically. Okay? Pigtail. Oh, this is good. I cleaned this out. I don't have to. I didn't want to replace this because it has the longer arm here, which was like that, which I happen to like. The newer ones are shorter, and then it's hard to get the pressure control back on. Um, pressure gauge and uh, side glass. Once a month, right? Yes, once a month. How does that look? They look clean. Good. And if they weren't clean, we'd have to clean them. Scrub the sections.
So very nice. All right, we're going to go with the pressure gauge, side glass. You're going to uh, brush off, I mean, uh, wipe off the, the burners, put mm -hmm. them back in. The combustion chamber is already cleaned. Um, just wash that bucket. I'm going to get the what we need for the get glass. Hey, Frankie. Yes, sir. Think there's anything wrong with this pressure gauge? <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, if it's 11 PSI right now, we in trouble. <laughs> we in trouble. All right, I couldn't... Uh, couldn't get that rod out, so we're gonna have to get that out the old fashioned way with brute force. So now that I have the upper and lower valves out, uh, one thing I like to do is use this rod. I'm gonna use this rod to clean out that debris that's in there. See that? On the threads, the cocky in there. You can see the upper one is clean because generally there's not water up there. There's generally water down here. Well, there's always water down here. I'm gonna make that clean. And while we're at it, we're gonna do the same thing with the cycle, uh, the, the gauge one, where the pressure gauge was, and make sure the same with the pressure troll pigtail. Okay, so now they're all clean. We good to reinstall the new valves, gauge, and then pigtail. Frankie, it don't fit, it's too long. Yes, sir. That's what your sister said to me last night. Oh, it's too long, it don't fit. <laughs> all right, Frankie, you see the, here is the, uh, the new side glass, and you can see it's a little too long, all right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever cut a uh, side glass before? No. First time for everything. Not today, though. Today you'll watch. Oh. <laughs> oh. What are you gonna do? There's a side glass. We're gonna stick it into the bottom uh, gauge valve, okay? And make sure it's all the way in. And you'll feel it, like when the, the pipe is into a, a PEX uh, press fitting, right? And then I'm gonna take a little mark. I'm gonna mark it right at the bottom of the connection where it's gonna go into the valve, okay? If I make it, if I make it too long, right? It's very hard to cut an eighth of an inch or less off of a piece of glass, or even a half of an inch, very hard to cut that off, right? So I made a little mark right there with a Sharpie, all right? And for ships and giggles, we're gonna compare that to the old one, okay? Here's the old one. And one of the first things you're gonna notice is that the glass is a little worn. Like, look, there's even a hole right there, right? Um, that's the power of water. When you think about the power of water, like Mikey Pipes says, they water didn't cut the glass like that, maybe someone broke it, right? Right? No. But look at the Grand Canyon, for example. Yeah, mic drop. Okay, so there's our, our mark there. We're going to take this one there, and you can see it looks like we're a little too long, actually, right? So let's just see. If I put this one back in there, I'm going to guess someone cut that too short, right? So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna sell for right in the middle, All right? So I'm gonna take a little mark there, and I'm gonna mark the height of the existing one. Okay? So now I know where I need to be with my sight glass cutter. I like the sight glass cutter. You know what I don't like, Frankie? What's that? You see this bucket? This five gallon bucket that Jasco Plumbing Supply mm -hmm. in the Bronx sent to me, it has a hole in it. I've only used it one time, which is here, draining this boiler, and it has a hole in it. So I guess beggars can't be choosers, but I'm just making a shout out. If you guys are gonna buy a bucket from Jasco, uh, don't do it! No okay. bueno, no bueno. So, we have our sight glass cutter. We're gonna line up that right in the center right there. Okay, and I'm gonna take this little slide and bring that closer to there. It acts as a stop and hold that right there. Okay, so if you take a quick, quick peek, you can see, I'll show you the cutter. You see that little thing right there? That's the cutter itself. It's gonna stop at the stop and you can see we're right there in the middle of the two, right? Now, I'm gonna push down on this. When I push down on this, the little groove right there in the stopper, if I don't have it on the groove, it's, it, it won't let me push, squeeze down on this and go like this. 
Now, some people say you can do this, just go around, score it once. I like to go around it a few times, like I'm doing right now. Uh, it's not going to do anything bad. It's just maybe wasting time, but I'm okay with that. Okay? So now that I've scored it a few times, I'm going to take that out. And you can see a little score mark right there, right? Now, moment of truth. You ready? Oh, it didn't do it. Yeah, now it did it. And look at that. Almost near perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that cut part, I like to keep on top. Right? I'm going to push this down carefully. Right? Because it is glass, keep in mind. And it's not a, a factory cut. It's a field cut. And it may be sharp. So, if you cut your finger, well, be a man and uh, suck it up. Or change your panties if you're a girl. Okay. Anyway. There it is. I have, in case you're wondering, we have, here's the brass nut. Here's a brass, I want to call it a friction washer, which will go right there. And then we have a rubber grommeter, rubber washer. And that's going to go there like that. So now I'm going to put this, I'm going to go for the top first. And you can see, right, plenty of room there. So I'm just gonna catch the bottom. Okay. And now I'm gonna slide up this a little bit. So right in there like that. And then I catch the top. Just like that. Okay, make sure she's right in center. We're gonna hand tight the two nuts on the top and lower valves. Upper and lower valves. Okay. And I'm going to take a little wrench or a little, in this case, a little baby channel lock. And we're going to tighten up just a little snug. If we over tighten this, we could crack the glass. Okay. Just like that. Now, there are two rods that came with the side glass. And those are just to protect the glass mm -hmm. from damage. Anyone hitting it. I like to use it to clean out things like that, that, and that. And they go in there like that. And the only thing left to do is put the pigtail on. Yes. And the pressure troll. We have a little bit of Teflon tape. I'm gonna use a wire brush. Just clean off the Teflon that's on the existing threads like that. Don't be a hack. Do it the right way. Take your time. You know, your customer's paying for a professional job. Don't wrap Teflon tape on old Teflon. That's kind of gross. side you know the other day i have a uh you know we only have office hours by appointment only right and the other day it's around i guess 3 34 o'clock in the afternoon the doorbell rings and i have, we have the ring camera so uh i'm sitting in my home office you know uh editing video and all that other stuff paperwork stuff like that and you know, it ring you know door rings and the ring the, the ring of doorbell rings and there's a, a younger gentleman there, uh, dressed nice. And um, I thought maybe he was Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> but no. <laughs> he, um, he actually goes to Barry Tech Bosey's in Westbury. And he remembers me from when I, gave a, I spoke at the class there a few months ago. And he's looking for a job. He actually, he said he emailed me his resume. Um, and he never got a response. So he figured, you know, he was in the area. Let me let him stop by the office. Hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, like the office has a, or hours by appointment only. I was like, but give me a call. I said this over the ring. So I feel bad because he interpreted that as I'll, I'll, he interpreted it as give me a call as I'll be there shortly. <laughs> and 20 minutes later, he rings again. I was like, um, I was waiting for you. Are, you. are you still coming? I was like, What do you mean? <laughs> Nonetheless. Um, we talk, and actually, he had emailed me while Daniel and I were AHR in Atlanta. And when Daniel and I were sitting at the bar in the hotel uh, lobby, and this email comes in from him, he's looking for a job. He wants an intern, a summer intern, or just for an apprentice position, right? Okay. So I give the phone, my phone to Daniel. I was like, here, Daniel, it's all you. Because we're talking, you know, while we're at AHR about, you know, future succession plans, you know, growth, you know, learning more of the business. Because he's, he's young. 
right? He's young, and uh, he's a doer, like I was, right? So uh, I said, here's the phone. You're complaining that we don't have enough guys, right? Answer him. And he writes them basically what we call like a Megillah, a big book, right? Paragraphs. And we don't hear back from him until he rang the doorbell. Mm. And it turns out when Daniel responded to that email, he only responded to, to me for some reason. It, was, it must have been a glitch in the system. Glitch in the system. A glitch in the system. Like the guy, was there a glitch in the system yesterday? Were we working on something yesterday? The guy says, a glitch in the system. <laughs> There's a glitch in the system. So, okay, so the pigtail is on. Okay, and now we're going to put the pressure troll on. We'll make sure there's clear of old debris. So you may want to just blow that out of there. Make sure there's no foreign debris left in there. We're going to put that on there. Then we're going to fire this up. Uh, but for now, we could safely fill the boiler back up. We're going to make sure the upper and lower valves are closed. I'm sorry, are open. And be, it's a good habit when you uh, work on these, just to give them a little lefty-loosey, righty-tighty a little bit, just to free them up in case they're seized up. Now let's manually add water to the boiler. There's a manual feed. This is the automatic feed. Nice little bypass they set up right there. We have a little drip right there. Let's tighten it up a little bit. And we're going to watch this water level rise up. We want to fill it about five eighths, maybe no higher than three quarter. So somewhere right there. So there's that water. It's kind of clean, which is good. Not too shabby. So once it gets high enough, we're going to isolate the water while Frankie cleans out that. And right there, perfect. Okay. Yeah, put it on. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. Godzilla. Okay. So the pressure troll is reconnected. And we're just gonna make some adjustments to this. Only because I know Burnham. But we're gonna raise that because it's in territory which is not registrable. We're gonna bring that to two PSI and we're gonna keep that at two. We're gonna actually raise up a little bit higher right there because it's subtractive, okay? So now let's, um, all the burners are in. Mm -hmm. There's power to the boiler. Now we're gonna wait. All right, while well, Frankie is setting up the Testo 320 combustion analyzer to test the exhaust gases, uh, I wipe down the top of the boiler. Um, one of the things I like to do is make sure that the relay, the thermostat relay harness, is properly secured to the actual relay itself. And someone in the past took a piece of wire here and wrapped it around. So because over time of clicking, these things get loose. And I went on many service calls where this actually disengages from the relay. And uh, it's a stupid little pushing it in and <laughs> securing it. On newer, um, um, a newer independent series boilers, they actually come with a zip tie, so you can zip tie that around. Smart, but uh, setting that up, combustion analysis, all the burners are clean. We'll let this thing uh, run for a little bit. We have some uh, fluttering with the gas, so that should stop in the, hopefully in the near future. All right, so we take a look, our probe is in there. Let's take a look at our numbers here. We have uh, 363 and climbing still. We have O2 of six uh, 4.5, carbon monoxide of three. Let's scroll down a little bit with the down arrow button. Not that it makes a difference, but I wanna look at the, uh, there you go, CO2, 9.4. Let's go back up to the top again. Now, 4.4 is a little bit low on the oxygen, a little bit low, so I'm gonna show you an adjust. Actually, I stand corrected. And I'm going to take one from Steve Lab's book. You know who Steve Lab is? Steve Lab is a YouTube plumber. Okay. Who's out of Massachusetts. New Bedford, Massachusetts. <laughs> he has a trusty sidekick. I usually have an apprentice or help or someone training to put into a truck, right? Mm -hmm. um, but he has his fellow canine familiaris. His dog, Miss Molly. <laughs> and years ago, I'm going to give him a res all the respect that he, that, he's, that he gets, right? Years ago. This is probably 2014, mm. 2015. Uh, I needed to replace my combustion analyzer. I had a back rack one, and it was dead. And I have replaced many a boilers with that thing, mm. including the first time I used it, I sold them a new boiler. Because even after scrubbing the boiler, and even after potentially replacing the gas valve, they decided to replace the boiler. Because the carbon monoxide was off the charts. Yeah. yeah. 
So I was in the market of looking for a new combustion analyzer. I wasn't going to buy a new one. I wasn't going to repair the one I had for the course I could buy a brand new one for. But I also wasn't going to spend $2,000 for this piece of garbage that there's better out there mm -hmm. with nice color displays. Mm -hmm. Back rack, simple. It was like uh, retarded, right? I found this guy, Steve Lavermone, right, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He had like, I don't know, 40 or 50,000 subscribers at the time. Okay. And he had a great video on the Testo 320. And this is a play off his book. Here are the numbers for an atmospheric gas-fired boiler. See that? Feel free to pause. See those numbers? Mm -hmm. I'll forward it to you. So we should have a stack temperature between 325 and 500 degrees. The steam boiler is a little different. We have X, I forgot what, the, what X represents, X amount of degrees over boiling point. Because it's 212 degrees of, of water, water's boiling, and some people will say, no, this is just, it's a, a urban legend, but it's, no, it's true. We're at how much? 400? 421, and, and we're, we're around there, we're not jumping like crazy, mm -hmm. but most importantly, O2. O2 is 4.9%, so we're actually good. We were at 4.2, and most importantly, we have carbon monoxide less than 50 ppm, because if you have zero parts per million, you have perfect combustion. Anything over that is incomplete combustion, and that's what results in carbon monoxide, incomplete combustion. And over 50, call chimney? No, we're 50, yes, something wrong with the boiler. We can adjust that. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, maybe a clogged burners, dirty burners, dirty heat exchanger, gas pressure, gas issues, things like that. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> Learn something new every day. There's your lesson from Mikey Pipes. All right, so we have our service tag. Okay, today's date, gauge, side glass, and tune up. Sticker. And here's the combustion printout results. As you can see, as our stack, oxygen, one ppm of carbon monoxide, and everything, all the other numbers are good with negative draft. It's a little U-line shipping packy, uh, baggy. When we come back for future tune-ups, future service, we can put future tests in there. Look Frankie be styling like he's going on GQ with model or something. What's up with that? I caught you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you uh, found this video somewhat educational. Um, showed you how to clean a pigtail. I haven't done that on camera before. I normally just replace them, but it had that longer, longer shank on, a longer arm on it, so it was worth to, uh, it was worth to keep it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got something out of it. Remember, learn something new every day. All right, catch you in the next one. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.